make no mistake, CIA, NSA, where they were experimenting with social networks in the late 70s. They are already figured out this was going to happen. And I think a lot of what you see in Silicon Valley clearly came out of a lot of the agencies funding InQtel, which is the CIA's venture capital. They're not bashful about it. They're not really that secretive. It's out there. It wasn't like Facebook sharing servers with InQtel and there was something I, like that. I mean, it's like, I, mean <laughs> I know. Some, that, I mean, there's some stuff that was like, hmm. You can get helped along the way. Steve it didn't come from a lab. It just happened to come from the same city as the lab, the kind of stuff going but on. But there's a lot of help that can happen. You don't really know about it. When I was first experimenting with the very first podcast technology, Steve Jobs was alerted that I was using up a lot of my Mac drive bandwidth, which no one had ever thought of using that as a server. And he heard about it. He said, just let Adam do his, he told me this story later, so just let him, let him do his thing, let's see where he goes with this. So you don't know what hands are working in the background. But what we do know is that they, they saw this revolution happening. Uh, of course, you know, it wasn't Al Gore actually who invented the internet, but it was DARPA, it was government who, you know, came up with this, this beautiful network that we now use. So that layer on top, a lot of it's been orchestrated. And where you might think that now the truth is within the hands of the people, it's actually gotten much easier for people to propagandize everybody else. And, and we've seen this, you know, the truth has come out about you know, the Twitter files and how much uh, yeah. the government was really controlling what, what could be seen and what could be heard. So we're in this interesting place where, in my mind, the only information that can still kind of be trusted is some written word on independently hosted. If it's on a server or somewhere that a CEO has a company, you just can't trust it, period. Some of that's going to be manipulated, but the independent open stuff and podcast is really, in my mind, one of the last places where you can at least get unadulterated information directly from someone. You may not trust that person, but that information is kind of hard to falsify. No one can really hide all the podcasts, and that's exactly what we did is make sure that podcasts would yeah. be available even if it's taken down everywhere else. So... But it's also what has gone is the days of here's this is why Walter Cronkite was the most trustworthy man is because that was the only thing you could see. Everyone watched him. Yep. Now there's these millions of places, which is why you get 4chan groups, which, you know, again, infiltrated. Who knows what's going on there? Don't hate me, 4chan. <laughs> um, you, you know, you can get people who yeah. like even the Moms for Liberty have their own little little groups and they may have their own special brand of, of wacky things that they're thinking of and believing in, but it is crossing over and that people are filtering out and becoming little leaders of, of, their, of their groups. So you no longer have to have the biggest. You don't have to be the number one that everyone is going to believe. People have learned, particularly younger people, that oh, you know, I'm over here with these wackos and I'm going to kind of stick with them and I'm going to learn and I'm going to you know, stay in this group. And that can be a very successful group. But the opposite is also true. The algorithms drive people <clears throat> to the same thinking, yeah. which Echo is, is, is the scary part for me. Like TikTok is really great. TikTok does the opposite of the American media model. And we have to be very clear about this. The American media model, which is employed by social media companies, by um, mainstream media, television, radio, and by politicians, is strife. You got people over here that say this, we're gonna throw in some people who disagree. Let's get some argument going, that's good for ratings, people get all spun up, we can sell ads, politicians can use it to say that guy sucks, red is bad, blue is bad. That's the model, that's what we've always held to. The Chinese model, which is what TikTok does, is, oh, you wanna be in Christ? Here's everyone who's in Christ. We're not gonna put any Satanists in there, no, we'll keep them away. You're trans, we're gonna keep you with trans. We're gonna keep you all, it's gonna be fine, you're gonna be there. You're right, you're blue, they put everybody in those spaces. That, of course, is equally as dangerous. Wasn't well, that what the algorithms naturally do on Facebook and no, the other platforms? No, no, they bring it together and then they inject strife. They need to have the op, they'll inject that into yeah. someone else. Oh my God, I can't believe this person said that. This is no good. I've got to post something back. They want action. They want engagement. They want activity. And the only way that, that our media has learned how to do that, certainly with cable news, is to 
say, well, those guys suck. They say this. Well, they, and, you know, they're playing yeah. clips of each other's stuff. There's no news anymore. Just, you know, it's just it's going all layers like of meta commentary on commentary which is, all the way down. Which is why it's phenomenal when you see Bobby the K, as I call him, Bobby the Op, really, but Bobby the K, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's yeah. saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to talk bad about my opponents. I'm not going to even talk bad about the president. I'm not going to do that. I will talk bad about the big pharma, military industrial complex, regulatory capture. I mean, this, is, this is mind blowing. So here we have, going back to Kennedy, Kennedy was a television president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Donald Trump, President Trump was the Twitter president. Bobby the K comes out and says, I'm going to be the podcast president because he figured out that that's the last place where you can go on in a long, long form format and speak your piece that will not be chopped into sound bites. And it's working. So I think Vivek Ramaswamy on the right has a similar vibe. He's going I, on all kinds of stuff. Is there that much stuff. difference between those two? They're yeah. saying the same thing. <laughs> it's, so it's just, a, it's just a label, you know, it's just who's, whatever the label is. Absolutely, he's saying he's saying yeah. the same things. They're all kind of saying the same thing now. That's what's so amazing. But the way it's chopped up, the way it's it's presented in the linear television model, but even in sound bites on social media, that's where it all gets distorted. So the elite messaging system has you know figured out well we can control some people. We can you know, the CIA has thousands of people writing books, doing stuff. The State Department has techno experts who for uh, a decade have been just injecting stuff into Telegram. All the, This is how revolutions are now orchestrated by intelligence agencies putting out stuff on Telegram and, and hyping people up and you only need a couple of agents in the field to do it. But when you get the, the players to sit down in a long form, unedited, like Rogan or this show or, uh, I mean, you name it, there's, there's so many of them. Wow, now people are starting to take note. And like, okay, I can just sit here and listen. I'm spun down, it's three hours. I'm gonna get some information. I think that's the revolution. We've taken the opposite approach to what makes money, <laughs> to what really <laughs> makes money. Making money is fast, 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 fast. Oh, I'm crazy, commercial. Uh, I took the information and all right, now back to uh, that's, how, that's how that yeah. works. Which, you know, so there's all kinds of issues that comes with that, you know, commercials, market, and none of that's really working that well. I mean, I'm not against marketing or commercials, but it's, it's not having the same effect on people. I call it the fear industrial complex. I, I know that's, I, did, I didn't coin that, but. That's complete, yeah, it's absolutely true. Yeah, you hit know, your buttons. What's that button we can push? Can we get you riled up? You know, can the shock just... doctrine. That's what you know. Oh, yeah, Naomi yeah. Wolf would call it. Or, yeah. Naomi Klein. Was, was it Klein? Or I Wolf? think it was Klein. I get yeah. the Naomi's mixed up. But yeah. I really love Naomi Wolf. I don't. Yeah. I don't know Klein. Klein. I don't know Klein so well. I don't a little know. More, little, oh, yeah. little too much communism for me. So to come back to the revolt of the public, that's interesting, and your intersection with it is, you know, you came into this. We were talking about it, you loved radio broadcasts. Mm -hmm. So that's. That is the sort of tool of totalitarianism for the 20th century. Traditionally, yeah, traditionally, sure. One to many. Yeah. Hitler, Stalin, yeah. Yeah. FDR, not all morally sure. equal, obviously, <laughs> but still, all use the radio. They're all bad guys. <laughs> not so great, not so great. FDR wasn't great. Yeah. He sort of was. Well, well. There's polls in the, in the 30s. I think it was like a majority of uh, American businessmen believed that fascism was upon us on the but basis FDR of FDR. did some, he had theater of the mind. He did some cool stuff. It's a fireside chat. And he would tell people, go out, go get your globe, people, or get your atlas. And there would be lines of people to get globes and atlases the next day so that when he said, okay, now let's go look at, you know, the Middle East. And people would be like, you know, like following along with him as he was talking about these regions and these places. I mean, that's pretty cool stuff. That's power of radio right there. Well, there is something about audio and, and, and certainly about music. There's a... It's a kind of an apocryphal, perhaps, quote that music is the art form to which all others aspire. I don't, I don't remember. I've heard this. I've picked it up. I'm like, sounds maybe good. nobody said it, yeah. but I think it's true. Mm -hmm. um, music is it like it moves you. You take the score out of a movie, and it's like same dead. guys knew that. You know, Flight of the Valkyries. I mean, that that's what Hitler played before every speech. It, it actually, Goering, uh, Goebbels. I'm sorry, he's the one that came up with it, and it would hype people up, and they'd be, they'd be all ready, and they'd be psyched for it. Yeah, so you've sat at the intersection of all these really powerful things going on. Music. Yeah. I mean, MTV 
was a culture machine. It was a culture driver. It no longer is, but I mean, it, it, when you were there and for that period, for a while after, it defined youth culture. It was a touchstone. Well, it changed very quickly to a very important cultural movement, which is hip hop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, props to, uh, to Ted Demi, miss him, um, and Dr. Dre and Ed Lover, and they did Yo! MTV raps. Hip hop was the CNN of urban America, which is code for black. Um, it was, it, but it really was yeah. how the hood communicated and how'd you communicate that? Blasting it loud in your car, on your ghetto blaster, etc. Of course, a lot of commercialism came with it, but man, that really amplified the message. Also got co-opted incredibly quickly. I mean, and to this day, it, it's amazing that you could go to any music director and say, hey, I've got this entire catalog of very popular songs about uh, killing puppies. Do you want to play it? And, you know, of course, I mean, no, but I, how about this catalog of black men killing black men? Dude, bring it on. I can't play enough of it. So, you know, this, there's something very sick going on there. Something interesting happened in 2012, I believe. Radio has always been this propaganda machine. And we have yeah. the voice of America, the voice of Europe, the yep. voice of Asia, which is, you the know. One to many. And, Get you all and, on the and, same and, page, yeah. and, and it's and my these, page. And these are government broadcast organizations. Yeah. Interesting enough, um, Tucker Carlson's dad, it was in charge of that for quite a long time. And this is where, you know, America's great. Hello, Russia. America's great. Hello, Asia. America's great. And so it's the Broadcast Board of Governors. And we can look it up. You can see what they do. And it's all funded by, you know, our, our State Department, et cetera. Cold War. It's propaganda. Yeah. And it's just still running today. You know, it's still there. But yeah. they came to Congress uh, in 2012 and said, you know, we have a problem. The problem is the internet. Of course, we're also putting stuff on the internet now. And ever since the Church Commission, we talked about that earlier, where we found out the CIA was basically inside all the news organizations. The um, Smith-Munt Act came, was birthed in the 70s. And yeah. What did that do? The American government may not propagandize against Americans. Oh, right. So yes. you can do, you can broadcast in Europe all you want, but as long as we- I'm have, sorry. As Americans- Was there ever any kind of thing where the government actually abided by that law? Well, <laughs> well, what was funny was in 2012- I'm sorry to be, I just like, no, you're, it's, you're like, so it's right. like so hilarious. And in 2012, you know, the propaganda department, it says, listen, um, we're putting everything on the internet, so Americans are gonna stumble on this stuff, so you know, we really can't adhere to the law anymore. No problem. So in the National Defense Authorization Act, I believe it was 2010 or 2012, uh, it, re it was repealed. It was just repealed. So now, since then, the American government can legally propagandize against its own people. So if you thought that it was happening anyway, sure. Now it's happening all the time, everywhere, almost every place. The CIA, I know from family members, they have thousands of people who do nothing but write articles and books for other people. You know, it used to be the way propaganda would work when it was no longer allowed. You'd have your agent in Uganda and would write for the Uganda Times. You yeah. know, some, something about, well, we got to get Idi Amin in or whatever, you know, or he's bad or good. It doesn't matter. We he was him. bad yesterday, I mean, but now yeah, he's good. Yeah. He'll be bad tomorrow, exactly. but for now, he's good. So Saddam's our so he, good guy he, until he's our bad so guy. So he'd write his, I got to come up with the modern version. He'd write <laughs> the story for the Uganda Times. So the Washington Times could say, according to the Uganda Times, blah, 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 blah. So it's circular. So, you know, so they're just quoting right. something that sounds good and official, but really it's already been you know, appropriated and it's it's propaganda, right, the source. And there's only two papers or one in the in that area, so it's Correct. easy, big bullseye. Money. No just problem. Pay, just money. He's going with money. Here's your new guy. Okay, well, that's fine. Now, we're not bashful. I mean, first of all, you don't need sources anymore. You just go on television and say, sources say, according to sources familiar with the map, according to sources familiar with the president's thinking, or according to psychics, here's this former CIA, former FBI, former NSA, former general, former, the, and they have books. They go out on speaking tours. Do you really think they're all writing these books? No, no, these, these books are written. They have entire departments of people writing op-eds, everything for these, X, and I don't know this guy, so I don't, you know, but can you ever really be X? Um, 
to go out and I'll and, vouch for Martin and, and so far you, as I know him. He's a good I mean, guy. I mean, when you have a book, you can go on a book tour and you can yeah. speak about stuff. So, but now it's just you know they're on staff now. They, they're literally paid by the news organizations to report, and we have to trust these guys. I mean, so it's very, um, it's sick. It's sick is what it is. It's, it's sick. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Adam Curry. And one of the best ways you can help support the channel is to subscribe to us so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.